continuing today with our series, 21 Days of Prayer. Everyone say prayer. prayer. Hopefully you've been uh, praying and seeking God. We are uh, in part two of our series today. In fact, you are a third of the way through. Today is day seven. So congratulations. Can we give everybody a hand? Seven days in a row you prayed. And hopefully it was more than just, oh God, get me to work on time. You actually spent some time praying and seeking the Lord. I'm excited for what God's going to teach us today, aren't you? Yes. If you're at home watching, glad to have you with us today. I want to just tell you a little story. There was a man who uh, ran up to his pastor one day, and he said, Pastor, you, you have to pray for me because my work has been so slow. If, if something doesn't change, I'm going to have to get a new job or, or even a new career. I, I really need some customers. And uh, he said, okay. He goes, I can pray. He goes, listen, you really need to pray, Pastor, for some, for some customers. You need to ask for God to bring some customers. He says, okay. Well, the pastor didn't know the guy very well. He'd only been to church a handful of times. So he said, hey, uh, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm a mortician. <laughs> okay, that's a really bad joke. But let me just say, let me just say this. Having been in that industry, have you ever been in a situation where you just don't didn't know what to pray uh, or how to pray for something, maybe even for your own life. Maybe there's something going on. You're just like, man, I don't know. I don't even know how to do this thing. Maybe prayer's new for you. Maybe you got a really delicate situation. You know how to pray. Like, how do you pray for a mortician? I don't know, uh, but God does. And uh, we're just, you know, say, God, give them customers. Don't let one of them be me. <laughs> I don't know. But we're in part two of our series of prayer, and we're going to talk about something. In your first fill-in today, we're going to talk about prayer 101. Everyone say 101. 101. So it's just really the beginning. Today we have Fusion Family Member Class 101, where you kind of learn what Fusion's all about. What I'm going to teach you right now for the next few minutes is prayer 101, because for some of us, we might come from a different prayer background. Maybe you come from another religion. Maybe you come from no religious experience whatsoever, and you have kind of these weird preconceived ideas about prayer and, and how to do it and, and what it's all about. And we're going to learn today from the best, Jesus. And he teaches us through scripture what prayer is all about. In fact, there was this instance where he was talking with the disciples and the disciples said, teach us to pray. And he taught them this great prayer that we know now as the Lord's Prayer. Well, one of those accounts is found in Matthew chapter 6. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn over there to Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to learn from it what Jesus had to say about prayer. Are you ready? Everyone say, I'm ready. ready. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you ready? Because I'm telling you, if you learn how to pray, if you learn how to pray, whether you're a Christian or not, you can still pray to God. You can still say, God, uh, I'm not sure about you yet. Uh, whether you're real or what, I'm, I got some questions, man. Um, but if you are real, I'm just asking you, this is prayer, I'm asking you to, to open my eyes to see. Because let me tell you, if you're not a Christian today, you're going to want to know if God's real or not. And if you ask him, he'll show you. And you can pray even though you're not a Christian. And you can say, God, reveal yourself to me. That's prayer, talking to God. And so Jesus unfolds prayer to us in Matthew chapter 6. And he goes on this whole little discourse with the disciples and we're going to learn from it today. We're going to start in verse 5. And if you don't have a Bible, that's okay. I've got the notes up here for you. And here's how he starts. He goes on this thing and he says what prayer is and prayer what, what prayer is and what it isn't. When you pray, stop right there. It's very interesting over the next few minutes how Jesus assumes that you're going to pray. He doesn't say if. You're going to see it in a minute. He says it several times. When you pray. God has an expectation from you and from me that we are going to pray and seek him. You got it? It's not just, man, I hope you fit it into your schedule. But Jesus says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you that they have received their reward in full. Everyone say full reward. You see, the problem was Jesus was addressing a cultural issue that the religious leaders in the Jewish community had this, this pompous attitude, 
and when they would pray, they would stand on the street corners and be real loud and boisterous, and, and they would be in their synagogues, be real loud and boisterous, and they would try to look super spiritual to everyone around, say, man, look what a great prayer I am. I'm so good at praying. And Jesus teaches us what prayer isn't, and this is what he says, prayer isn't about looking spiritually cool. You know, sometimes we, we pray, maybe you're here today, you've been around prayer a little bit, and we pray and we say, man, if, I, if my prayer sounds really cool and religious, I'm going to look really cool and religious to everyone else. I have this problem, but in reverse. Sometimes I don't pray for people, especially in public, I'm telling you, just being transparent as your pastor, sometimes the enemy gets me, and I don't pray for people because I'm worried what other people might think. You ever have that problem? Come on, don't you, you don't even have to say out loud because I know you do. We all do. We get a little t- intimidated. Like, man, I don't know. I'm going to kind of look, I'm, I'm going to look spiritual. God forbid. And it's a weakness I have. I have to overcome it all the time. And so uh, we kind of, we don't want to lose some of our cool status. Jesus said, hey, it's not about that. And then he goes on to say this in verse 6. He says, but when you pray, but when you pray, he he assumes again, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Very, very good little thing we need to learn, and Jesus says this, prayer isn't about looking spiritually cool, but prayer is about you and God. It's about you and God. You see, there are times in our life that we come together as a church and we pray corporately. In fact, the last Sunday night of of this month, right before Thanksgiving, we're going to end our 21 days in prayer with a great big praise and prayer night and potluck, you know, all the great P's of a great church, praise, prayer, and potluck, right? Those are what make a great church. I'm going to come out with a book, three P's of a successful church, and that's it. And we're going to do it on the last Sunday night of this month, and we're going to come together corporately, and we're going to pray. Now, there are times when you get together with two or three people, and you pray in a group. Jesus said, when two or three people are gathered in my name, my presence is there with them, the community of God. We love getting together as a community of God. I love coming to church. I love praying with people. But there's an element to prayer that's very personal, that's between you and the Lord only. In fact, Jesus says, I want it to become so intimate that I want you to close the door so your spouse can't see, so your kids can't see, so the TV's off, right? And, and, and you, got, you got no distractions, and you close the door, and it's between you and the Lord. Say, God, it's just me and you in here, Amen. Yes. right? In fact, I would say this to you. Prayer is the most intimate thing you will ever do with God. Because prayer paves the way for worship. Prayer paves the way for our understanding in the word, to the Word of God. Prayer paves the way to a solid, good, godly community. In fact, you can't come to the Lord without prayer. This, this, this vocal, vocalization of God, I believe in you, that's prayer. When you're talking to God, and and Jesus says, listen, I want you to make prayer about you and me, not about other people. And then he goes on, and he says, listen, and when you pray, verse 7 and 8, notice how he assumes we're going to pray again, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Everybody say many words. There are many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. Friday night, I had three of my nieces over. And they're all under the age of six. I cannot remember the last time I heard so many words. It was a nonstop machine gun of words. Not e- Listen, I got home Friday and I went. I knew they were coming. I can't remember what I was doing. Uh, but I got home, and I, and I opened my bedroom door, and I hear this rowdy ruckus going on on my bedroom door, and I open, and here's three six-year-olds bouncing on my bed, and, 
you know, my wife's frazzled, right? Her eyes are bloodshot. She's only had the kids for a couple hours already. I'm just kidding. That's over-exaggeration, but it is funny. And I walk in, and, and I open the door in my room, and they look at me, and they said, get out. No boys allowed. <laughs> I got kicked out of my own room. They had all kinds of words, nonstop words. It got to the point after about, uh, when I went to drop them off, I had this little thing going, right? <laughs> I was like, hey, we're we almost to the, we're going to drop them off soon? It's like nonstop words. My, my head was ringing. You know, sometimes we're like that with God. We feel like, right, that we've got to babble all these words. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said prayer is not about convincing God with the right words. You see, every other religion in the world tries to get you to chant your prayers, say your prayers over and over and over and over again, and do these things in repetition to try and convince God or the gods they believe in to listen to them. That's not how God works. Because Jesus wants you to know that God already knows what you need before you even ask him. I mean, just think about that. I wish I knew I had that ability. That I just knew what I needed before. She, I would save me a lot of trouble. I'm really surprised I didn't get more amens from the women on that one. Yeah, pastor. <laughs> but you know, but it's, it's this truth, right? It's this truth. And we think, we think as Christians, right? Maybe you're not a Christian here, but you, 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 know, you want to know more about it. We have this kind of weird idea that we've got this secret language. Like if I say, you know, Heavenly Father, uh, 20 times in my prayer here, finally hear, hear me. Or if I just, you know, if I try to make it sound more spiritual and babble on and on, Jesus said, don't be like that. It's not about that. You don't have to convince me. I already know. What I just want you to do, I just want you to talk to me. I just want you to convey to me what's on your heart, and I'm going to begin to work in your life. And he begins to tell us what prayer is and what prayer isn't. And then he says, this is what it is and this is what it isn't. And then he says, this then is how you should pray. Everyone say how. This then is how you should pray. And now Jesus goes on and he gives us one of the most dynamic lessons about prayer recorded in the scriptures. And here's what he says. It's how to pray prayer 101. He says, first and foremost, four powerful words. He says, our father in heaven. Do you know where God lives? In heaven. That's where he's at. And Jesus is saying the first thing you and I need to do with our prayer time is we first need to align ourselves with who we're praying to. And he's saying, number one, you need to pray to God. You need to pray to God. We're not praying to anybody else. We're not praying to anyone else that's out there. You ever been distracted in prayer? How many of you have ever just say, you've, you've said a prayer, um, but you just said the words, but your mind wasn't focused on God and your heart wasn't turned to God? We had this prayer as a kid that we would pray. We, when my Nana and Papa were over, we would, we would sit around the table for dinner or breakfast, whatever. We'd all hold hands and we'd pray. And we'd, we'd close our eyes and, and we'd all say the prayer out loud together. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. Please bless it to our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. And we prayed that every day, my, every time, my, my entire childhood, we prayed that. And, we, and it was basically just a prayer of repetition. Our mind and heart wasn't focused on God, our Heavenly Father. It was just words we were spewing out of our mouth. And so Jesus says, listen, the first thing you need to get right is you need to get right the who you're praying to, our Heavenly Father. And then he goes on to say, hallowed or holy be your name. Everyone say holy. holy. God's name is holy. Holy. And Jesus is aligning us. He says, listen, first, you got to get it right to who you're praying to. And now I want you to get to know what, you know, the significance of who you're praying to. And this means, number two, that we pray to worship God. Everybody say worship. We pray to worship God. You see, it needs to come from our heart. It can't just be this, this, this drudgery in our life. It can't just be this thing like, okay, I got to do, I got to do my prayer duty. I guess I'm going to have to do this, you know, but it has to come from this heart and this desire. I saw a video, you know, just a, a few weeks ago, uh, and, and this leader in the church was running a prayer meeting, and some guy had videoed. You got, you got to be really careful as a pastor, you know, because people video you. I'm on video right now. Everything I say is being recorded. 
And he's sitting there, and he's at the prayer service on the platform. He's sitting at a table, and he's texting while he's praying. And he's texting, oh, Lord, he looks at, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, at my house, you're not allowed to have your cell phone at the dinner table. It's rude. And you should know culturally it's rude to be on your phone when you're having a conversation with somebody. It's rude to look at your new, your new watch that you can text back and forth while you're having, somebody's talking to you like, oh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> and you just start reading it. Because you know what that tells people? That your heart is not in it. Your heart's not in the conversation. You're not, your heart is not engaged in it. And so what Jesus is saying is, listen, first pray to God and say, God, you're holy and I'm not, I want to connect right now to you in a, in a way of worship and say, God, I'm first and foremost focusing on your goodness and I'm giving you all of my attention. All of my attention. And so we say, God, I'm going to pray to you as an act of worship and holy is your name. And then he goes on and Jesus says this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Everyone say your will be done. One more time, your will be done. Now say, not my will, but your will. And this is what Jesus is teaching us about prayer. He says, listen, uh, I want your kingdom come and your will to be done. And this is point number three. We pray to align with God's purpose. We pray to align with God's purpose. How many here have ever made a plan for your life? Raise your hand. Some of you aren't sure how to raise your hand. Like, I don't know. I just wing it. My entire life, I wing it. And so uh, we make plans for our life. Now, raise your other hand if you've ever made a plan for your life that didn't work out. Right? Lots of us. You know, something didn't work right in business. Something didn't go right in a relationship. Something didn't happen right with your sports team. Man, I made plans to win. Fantasy football didn't work out. I'm devastated. And we make all kinds of plans for ourselves And what Jesus is saying is that you and I need to pray so that our plans align with God's plan. That our purpose aligns with God's purpose. Did you know that God's purpose for you will never fail? Do you know that God's plan and God's purpose in heaven always comes to completion? Do you know that God's plan and purpose for this earth, for your life, will always come to completion? So is the word, the Bible says, that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me void, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I've sent it. Isaiah 51. In Psalms 33, it says this, verse 11, The plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Your prayer life and my prayer life needs to align with God's purpose. Now, you don't raise your hand for this, but I'm going to ask you a rhetorical question. You ever, uh, you ever been mad at God? People get mad at God all the time. I do, as a pastor, I deal with people all the time that are mad at God. And, they, and we say things like, um, God didn't heal my mom, so I'm mad. Um, and she died, and I'm mad at God. I didn't get that promotion at work, and I asked God for it, so I'm mad at God. I had terrible parents growing up, and and I'm mad at God. If God was real, then that wouldn't have happened, and so I'm mad at God. I'm I'm sick, and I shouldn't be sick, and I asked God to heal me, and because I'm not healed, I'm mad at God. It's God's fault. And ultimately, you know what we're saying? is God, I asked you for something and you didn't conform to my will, so I'm mad at you for not conforming to my will. We gotta be very careful because prayer is when we come to God and we say, God, yeah, things in life kind of, you know, don't go the way I want them. Well, in fact, a lot of things don't. But I'm just, I just want you to know that I'm coming to you right now as your servant and I just wanna align with your will. And God, I'm gonna pray you help me to like it. And not only like it, love it. Help me to love where you have me right now. That's a prayer of a mature person. 
Because not everything in your life goes the way you want it. You got to know that by now. But it always goes the way God wants it. If you surrender to him, God, help me to align with your will and with your plan. It's interesting to note that the first three things that Jesus teaches us about prayer have absolutely nothing to do with you. They have to do with putting our eyes and fixing our eyes on God. Our Father who's in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, prayer is all about you. And we start our prayer time. Jesus is not giving us a chant that we need to say. He's not giving us a prayer that we say, you know, Lord, I'm going to say this over and over and over again. He's given us a principle that when we come to the Lord in prayer, God, first, I'm fixing my whole attention upon you because you're holy and I'm not. And I want to start my prayer time with that. You're good and I'm not. My situation's not good, but you're still good. And I'm fixing my eyes on you. If you do that, and you start your prayer time like that, it'll radically change your prayer time. And Jesus teaches us that. Then he goes on and he says this. He begins to now deal with us. He says, give us today our daily bread. Let's read that in fusion language. Give us this Sunday our Panera. Or I'm going to a new church. Amen. Give us today our daily bread. It's very interesting that Jesus doesn't say, uh, pray, God, bless me for the next 90 days. Lord, bless my retirement fund. God, help me to be successful. Now, none of those prayers are bad. You should pray for your future. You should pray for the things you've invested in. You should pray for the future. I get it. But what he's saying is that don't get distracted with tomorrow. What I want you to do is focus on today and say, God, I don't know what you're going to do in my life tomorrow, but today I pray you give me just enough. Because when you give me just enough, I have enough. You should write that down somewhere. When he gives you just enough, you always have enough. If you go back to the Old Testament, you you actually read the story of the Israelites fleeing Egypt. God blessed them with the manna. And each one, whether they had a big family or a small family, had just enough. God always gives you just enough. And you pray and you say, God, I want you to give me just enough. And that's number four. You pray for God's provision. You pray for God's provision. You know, God's the great supplier and the great provider. We don't like that sometimes because I want to be the great supplier and provider for my life. If I just try harder, if I just do better, if I just get more jobs, if I just, you know, could get another, you know, some extra money. I actually had a conversation with one of the guys from my uh, Wednesday morning small group and and we were talking about stuff and we got into, you know, finances and stuff. I said, yeah, I just need to, I need to figure out a way to make a little, little extra cash here and there. And he's like, oh, yeah, how much do you need? I said, ah, just a quick 100000 nothing real big. <laughs> Anybody else need a quick 100000 He goes, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know, something that doesn't require me to cross the border. But we're going to get a quick 100000 But I say, God, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know everything. You do. And I'm just going to pray you provide for me. It's not complicated. Let's make the main thing the main thing. God, just provide for me. We're so spoiled as Americans, right? You know how many people around the world live on a dollar a day? Philippians 4 says this, verse 19, God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You know, I was at small group on Wednesday night at my house, and we go over the message that we're talking about. And at uh, our Wednesday night small group, we were discussing last week's message about prayer and fasting, and one of the guys turned to me, and I never heard this phrase before. He said, you know the saying, Pastor, that a sick man has many wants, or a sick man has one want, but a healthy man has many wants. You know what the, the, the sick man wants? To get well. That's the only thing he cares about, just, right? We're all sick, and we need one thing. God, I want you to bring healing in my life. I want you to bring your provision in my life. I want you to bring your supply into my life. My one want, God, is that my whole life would align with you. That's my one want. And so we actually pray, God, your provision in my life. Jesus goes on in verse 12, and he says, and forgive us our debts. That means sins. Everybody say sins. As we also have forgiven our debtors, those who have sinned against us. Can I just stop right here for a second? This next couple minutes are going to make you real uncomfortable. I'm just going to just be honest with you right now. It's going to make you a little squirmy. 
But Jesus hits a really big issue in our life right here. And he says, now I want you to pray, Lord, forgive us of, of our sins and forgive us, for, help us to forgive those people who have sinned against us. And what he's saying, point five, is this, pray for forgiveness and a forgiving heart. Pray for forgiveness and a forgiving heart. See, you and I, when we come to the Lord, we say, God, I want you to help me, first, first and foremost, forgive me. Because I keep screwing it up. I keep messing up. I keep falling short. And God, I need you to continue to help me with your grace. I need your grace and and forgiveness every day. I need your mercies to be new every morning in my life. God, I need your forgiveness. And in the same context, God, I want you to help me to forgive other people, those people who have sinned against me. Now, Jesus takes it a step further. In a few verses down in the chapter, he says something that's super powerful and super uncomfortable. He says this in verses 14 and 15. He says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also, everybody say will also, forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. That's tough. Jesus makes a direct correlation between his grace towards us and our grace towards others. You see, we like to, sometimes we love to hold the grudge. You don't understand, Pastor, what my spouse did to me. You don't understand, Pastor, what happened when I was... I have a right to not forgive them. I have a right to live in my hurt. I have a right to have resentment and bitterness in my life. And we justify it in our life. And then Jesus obliterates our justification for those things. And he says, listen, you cannot receive my grace and not be a giver of my grace to other people. And so Jesus teaches us a very powerful truth about prayer. We say, God, I need you to be a forgiver in my life and continue to show me your grace and forgiveness. And Lord, in the same way, would you please give me the strength to forgive those people who have hurt me? It's hard. In fact, it's so hard, I would venture to say you can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. And you need to pray this and say, God, man, I got a lot of anger issues right now towards. Would you help me to be a forgiver? Because I don't want to miss out on your forgiveness. That's a powerful prayer. That's a life changing prayer. And we say, God, I need you to help me. Maybe there's people here in your life right now. You're thinking of they popped in your head when I started talking about this. You need to forgive. And maybe it's, not, maybe it's not a situation where you need to go to them and just look. Maybe they don't even know they've offended you. But you just need to let it go in your heart. Maybe for some of you, you need to actually go to the person to say, you know what, I just want you to know that I forgive you. I challenge you to do that. And I'm not saying it's easy, but it is godly. It is godly. Then Jesus says in verse 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lead us not into... You know, God never tempts you. He doesn't lead you into sin. He doesn't cause you to stumble. He actually leads you in his direction. And that's our prayer, number six. We need to pray for God's leading. Do you know what happens when we try to lead ourselves? All kinds of bad things. All kinds of bad things. Um, I was thinking about this point, and... um, I was thinking about it in relationship to, to children. I have four kids, and uh, I taught all my kids to, well, I, I'll take credit for it and give none to my wife. I taught all our kids to swim. But we did. Our, our, our purpose was that at the young age, they, were, they were, uh, would be good swimmers. But how many of you know when you have a little kid and you're by the pool, they run to the water, okay? You ever been to the beach? Right, and you, you see, you know, mom or dad or grandma, or grandpa, and they've got you know little Johnny, little Susie, and they're about this tall, and they're running to the waves. Right, they're like ah, they're all excited. You know, most kids, right? The normal ones, they're running to the to the water, right? And they're running, right? And so, and then we adults, we're on the we're on the shore, like oh man, those waves look big. 
that's dangerous. I might hurt myself. But not kids. They don't understand the danger. They just run to the deep end. I remember my son, Evan, we were near a hot tub, and he fell in and, and fell in deep end. I turned like this and turned like this, and he was gone. And one lunge, thank God he can't do it. He doesn't do it now because I can't actually stretch that far. One lunge, I reached down, and I grabbed it from the deep end. You know, our problem is all the time we try to lead ourselves, and in leading ourselves, we don't understand the danger fully, and we fall into the deep end. And we need to have a prayer that says, God, I want you to lead me. I'm asking for you to lead my life. Maybe that's a prayer you need to make today. God, would you lead me? Because I keep falling in the deep end, and I can't breathe underwater. I need your help. Jesus goes on this wonderful thing for several minutes, the most powerful teaching of prayer in the history of the world. He says, I want you to align with me first. Don't worry about what other people are doing. I want it to be just between you and me. And I want you to acknowledge that I'm the God of heaven and earth and that I'm holy. And and then I want you to, to pray that my kingdom would come, not your kingdom, but my kingdom come. And then in doing so, I want you to pray that I'll provide for your needs because I'm really your provider. And then I want you to ask for forgiveness. And in doing so, I want you to ask me to help you to overcome hurt and bitterness and unforgiveness in your life. And then I want you to continue to pray and seek my leading as as you ask me to come into your life and give you direction. These are great prayers. And I'm going to help you with this. In fact, at the start of this 21 days of prayer, I actually started texting you every day for 21 days. And maybe you missed out on that. Here's the number. You can just put it in your phone right now. And it's, there's the number. And you text 21 days. Some of you had a difficulty with this. There's no spaces in 21 days, okay? It's just 21 days. That's it, okay? It's just one big word. I lit, don't feel bad. I probably had 20 people contacting me this week saying, hey, I can't get the text. For the next 14 days... I'm going to be continuing to text you to help you grow in this area of prayer 101 so that we as a church would grow in our talking and our communication with God. Are you with me? So that we would continue to be a great praying church. I believe that that's what God wants us to do.